Hi everyone, welcome back. Across the country, hospitals are seeing a 40 to 60% decrease in hospital admins from heart attacks. And COVID-19 is sweeping the nation, but that doesn't necessarily mean that heart attacks are stopping. Today, we're joined by Dr. David Min, Medical Director for the Cardiovascular Clinical Program here at Intermountain Healthcare to talk about these statistics and why those are a little alarming, especially with what's going on right now. David, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. No, thanks for the time. So why is it so concerning to see such a large drop off of the number of people actually coming into the hospital right now with a heart attack? Sure, I think this is an important message that I, I want our communities to know and our neighbors as well as our patients, given that heart disease still remains the number one killer of Americans, uh, despite all uh, everything going on in this pandemic. Diseases, uh, not only coronary artery disease, but hypertension, high cholesterol, obesity, and diabetes are con continuing to progress. And heart attacks and strokes happen uh, during a pandemic. And so we've got great therapies, uh, great facilities, and people willing and ready and able uh, to take care of patients with heart disease. So that 40 to 60 percent, I'm assuming, is worldwide, that number, that decrease. Um, is that also typical for an Intermountain facility that we've also seen that decrease of people coming in with heart attacks as well? Yeah, so we've looked at this uh, to ensure that we are prepared for our patients. And unfortunately, we, just like the rest of the country, uh, have seen a decline in the number of patients coming to our emergency departments. And similarly, those who do come to our emergency departments with chest pain compared to the same period last year, we've seen a 35 to 45, 40% uh, decline similarly. And so we're concerned that uh, patients are with these conditions or symptoms are staying at, at home because of fear and anxiety. And we know that stress and anxiety increase the chances for having a heart attack. And certainly we're living in a time with high stress and anxiety right now. So it's almost a perfect storm. And we're concerned that we're seeing a similar trend that others are, are seeing nationwide. Let's talk about the symptoms a little bit too of a heart attack. Um, how are you supposed to know if you're having a heart attack if you've never experienced one before? And when should people actually be calling 911? Sure. So classic symptoms of a heart attack are chest pressure, that you feel uh, that comes on suddenly, oftentimes when you're exerting yourself, but it can come on at rest. If that chest pressure or that pain goes to your jaw or down your shoulder or don't down your arm, those are more classic signs uh, of a heart attack. Unfortunately, the non-classic signs of, of a heart attack or coronary artery disease are things like shortness of breath, palpitations, nausea. Uh, you may even have a slight fever associated with it. Right? Similar symptoms that a patient affected with COVID-19 may have, uh, and that may cause some fear and anxiety. But if you've got risk factors such as hypertension, diabetes, high cholesterol, a family history of coronary artery disease, if you've been a smoker uh, currently or in the past and you get any of those symptoms, again, chest pain, uh, shortness of breath, palpitations, or funny heartbeats, please seek uh, urgent care by calling 911. Is there an age that people should start considering uh, those signs maybe as something more related to a heart attack as well? I, uh, does it matter how old you are? Is does that contribute to it? Sure, so certainly age uh, can play a role. Uh, the older you are, and certainly if you've got more of those other conditions uh, that contribute to heart disease, uh, the more at risk you have uh, for having a heart attack. But generally we, we think of heart disease affecting those uh, that are 40 or older. Okay. So maybe I should think of that more as I could potentially have COVID-19 with the shortness of breath and a fever, but if someone has those that history of symptoms or family history and they're a little bit older, it should be something they should consider as well. I know a lot of people too are not really wanting to go seek medical care. I've seen that on our Facebook before that people are a little bit nervous to go seek medical care. What can you share about what our clinics are doing to help prevent our patients from getting COVID-19 when they actually come to the hospital? Sure, because that's the real fear, right? Is that, oh, I'm not feeling great. Something's a little bit off, but uh, I don't want to go there because that's where all the COVID is mm -hmm. uh, and that's where I'm going to get it. And I've done all the, the right things in terms of social distancing and staying safe. I want to reassure uh, our communities, our patients, and our neighbors that 
we are prepared uh, to take care of patients safely uh, within our facilities, whether you present to our emergency room or to our Instacare or to our clinics. Uh, we have taken the utmost in terms of precautions to keep you safe and to keep your loved ones safe when you return home. And so the experience might be slightly different uh, than what you typically are used to when you come to our emergency department or to our clinics. Uh, you'll be, uh, you'll, if you get, if you call ahead to a clinic appointment, you'll get asked a series of questions in terms of travel and exposure and symptoms so that we can prepare for your visit. If you're coming to our emergency department or to our clinic on the day of your clinic visit, you'll be asked uh, a set, another set of questions on more recent symptoms. You'll get your temperature checked. Uh, you'll be asked to sanitize your hands and then wear personal protective equipment, whether it's a mask you have that you bring uh, or you'll be given a mask. And that's really to protect you as well as our caregivers and other patients to prevent community spread. So it might look a little bit different, but we're still doing everything we can to help our patients is, is basically the understanding of that. A lot of times too with heart attacks or if something is happening, people don't consider that time is a super important factor for this. But why is time on getting from when you're having the heart attack or symptoms to actually getting care so important for you? Sure, time is critical. Uh, uh, and that's what we wanna stress on top of our facilities being safe and our caregivers being ready to take care of you uh, is that time is of utmost importance because if you're in the middle of a heart attack, if your symptoms of chest pain, shortness of breath, palpitations are due to a heart attack, generally a heart attack is caused by a blockage in one of your heart arteries to your heart muscle, um, and that blockage is starving your heart muscle with oxygen and other nutrients your heart needs to function. And your heart fun fun works 24-7, 365 from before we were born to our last days here. And we want that last day to be far from now. Mm -hmm. um, and so when heart muscle gets starved for oxygen, it dies. And unfortunately, when it dies, that heart muscle doesn't recover, despite any therapies we may be able to offer you. So again, time is critical because if we're able to open that artery up with great treatments that we have, we can restore, restore blood flow and limit damage to your heart. So one of the best ways too to reduce a person's actual risk for a heart attack is to think about the different factors that go into that. Is there something that people can do to actually help reduce those risks if they are uh, have a family history or even if they don't, just so they can be a little bit safer, especially right now? Amanda, that's a great question because obviously we want you to stay healthy. We don't want you to have to seek emergent care, right? We're ready and willing and able if, we, if, we, if, if you do need that. But ideally, we want you to stay healthy. And so that is eating healthy, getting regular exercise, and getting that routine care. Because staying healthy is the best way to prevent having a heart attack. Uh, additionally, if you can take steps to reduce stress, that's critically important as well. And, and that's really mindfulness in terms of the situation that we're in and the environment we have around us but seek that routine care. If you've got any of those chronic conditions like diabetes and hypertension or high cholesterol, don't delay seeking routine care. We've got opportunities for you to connect with uh, providers uh, if you've got questions, uh, either by telephone or through a video visit uh, so that we can keep you safe uh, and keep you healthy. That was gonna be my question to you is, can I still connect with my provider? It sounds like, yes, they're available either virtually or we're still doing some in-person uh, visits. How important are those routine appointments? If you had something that was canceled because of COVID, can you still reschedule that? How is that process working? Sure, we absolutely want our patients uh, to be able to seek care when they need to seek care, as well as get that routine maintenance care to keep them healthy. And so it, that interaction too may be different. We're all learning uh, in this environment of, of different ways that we connect with one another. Obviously this is a format uh, in terms of connection that is, uh, that is different. Um, and so uh, we do have video visits uh, that we were able to do, whether it's through our Connect Care uh, platform or through alternative means such as FaceTime or, or Google Duo. And certainly your providers are available by telephone. If you've got heart disease or you got risk factors for heart disease, if you've got a question, please pick up the phone, connect with one of our team members, and we'll figure out how to see you, whether it's in person or virtually. Dr. Min, is there anything else you want to tell our viewers today about why it's so important to make sure that you're looking out for the signs of heart attacks or if you do have one to seek care? 
Yeah, I think that it's it's critically important. Again, heart disease is the most prevalent cause of death that we have in America. And I know that we're hyper-focused on COVID-19, which is very important. Um, but at the same time, we know that there's an interaction between COVID uh, and heart disease, as well as heart disease progressing on its own. We're prepared either way to take care of you, uh, as well as prevent things from happening. So please reach out to your providers. Uh, our facilities are safe, and I know healthcare facilities across the state. Uh, similarly, are, I've taken a lot of steps to ensure that patients get timely, appropriate care when they need to. Well, David, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. And if you guys have any questions about heart disease or heart attacks, we have a lot of great information on our website at intermountainhealthcare.org. We also still have our COVID-19 hotline available that you can call to get screened and tested. That phone number is 844-442-5224. We also still have our Emotional Health Relief Hotline available seven days a week from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. That phone number is 833-442-2211. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next time.